first time. Uh, I, I made a video since, well, a tutorial video since I got the new computer, the new studio computer. And uh, as you can see, it still hasn't been given the respect that it deserves. It's on the floor right now. Uh, no comment. It's been like that for a while. It's where my Jeezy money went, and uh, well, most of it. And um, I have some rearranging to do. So if anyone wants any of the stuff in this room that I don't need, I got some bootleg God S CDs. I got uh, an autograph Alpha Omega poster. This is it's like a little film reel of him killing someone and stuffing them in the trunk. That kind of shut me up. Anyway, I'm making this video to answer some more of your stupid ass questions. I'm kidding. Uh, this is actually a really good and useful and important question that just keeps coming up and coming up and coming up. And uh, rather than me type individual text responses to each person who emails me asking the question, I thought I'd address this particular question with a video. Um, and that question has to do with recording it acid and um, latency concerns uh, associated with recording it acid. A lot of people email me saying, why are my vocals lining up with the beat when I record? Well, there are a couple answers, and you're not going to like many of those answers. So uh, let's, uh, let's let's get to the bad news first, because there, there is a silver lining. Uh, first of all, I just want to address the fact that if you're serious about recording and turning your computer, your, your personal computer, into a uh, studio computer, then you're going to need to make an investment, uh, bottom line. Um, you know, 100% of the people who email me asking me why there are latency problems with their uh, ACID setup are using stock sound cards. Now, um, I, I used to use a stock sound card with, with this Dell, and it's an old computer, but that's, you know, what I've made most of my beats on, and it served me well for years, for decades, actually. Actually, I ordered it back then, you know, when I ordered it back when I was in high school, this was a long time ago, it's a Pentium 4, uh, I ordered it with the Autogy 2 because I figured, oh, well, that's 24-bit, and it is 24-bit, but it's not necessarily designed for studio applications, so um, I ended up having, so I ended up having a lot of latency problems. And, I, you know, I couldn't even record with MIDI. It didn't have MIDI ins. I got the one-to-one -one MIDI, uh, the little MIDI egg from M-Audio, and that didn't work either. And I, I wasn't sure why, and it has to do with ACO drivers. Now, I'm not even going to bother explaining about ACO drivers, because this is my advice to you. There are thousands of models of these sound interfaces. Now, I finally wised up with the new computer and got one. This is... I can't be serious. This is a, a, the Ederol 24-bit, I don't know what the model number is, oh, the UA25, they pretty much all do the same thing. This one in particular has the MIDI ins and outs, uh, which I needed, and which you probably need if you're making all your beats with Sony Acid, FL Studio, Cubase, Logic, whatever. Any Anything that you need MIDI for, you're going to need the MIDI ins. Um, these are low latency machines, they have good ACO drivers, and um, they're compatible with Sony Acid. Now, um, you know, these can run anywhere from $70 and up. Uh, the pricier models have better preamps. They might have more ins. They might be uh, more stable. It, it all depends, but um, do a little research and uh, figure out what works. There are a lot of cheap, I shouldn't say cheap, less expensive versions out, uh, especially the M-Audio models. And, I, you know, as far as I know, they're all compatible with ACID. Um, and I'm not here to help you set those up, so please stop emailing me asking me how to set up your, your sound cards. Just read the manual. That's what it's there for. I don't know anything about any other sound card other than the one that I have, and even that one I have limited knowledge of. So if you have one of these nice sound cards, this video really shouldn't apply to you. If you're having trouble with latency and you have one of these studio quality sound cards, um, then you should contact the manufacturer. But, let's say you're stubborn, like I was for the last 10 plus years, and you don't want to spend the, the $200. Your sound card is not designed for this type of application. It's not designed for use with, you know, the, the preamp and the, the studio mic. However, 
uh, like I said, there's good news. I'm going to open Acid. I'm going to show you how you can kind of trick Acid into having almost zero latency with your stock sound card. Now, I can't guarantee that this is going to work for everybody, but it's worked for me and it's worked for a lot of the people to whom I gave this advice uh, via YouTube. So you can only hope for the best and try it out. Now, it's going to take a few minutes to figure this all out. I mean, not a long time, 10 minutes. So if you got 10 minutes, set it aside to figure this stuff out. Um, and um, it's it's more or less guesswork, but I'm going to show you how to do the guesswork. Okay, now here's what we're going to do. We're going to open up Sony Acid, and I'm running version 6 here, but version 7 uh, involves the same process. Create a new audio track. Uh, hit record. Remember, if you're running a mic or an instrument like a guitar, you're going to want to run through the left channel. This is a mono device. Do not try to record stereo with a standard condenser mic. Enable a metronome so we get a click. I'm going to be using a microphone to demonstrate this process. You can use a guitar or any instrument. Uh, you, the only reason you're using the instrument is to um, establish how off your recording latency actually is. So in this case, I arm a track to record. Hit record. I'm just going to snap my fingers to the metronome's beat. Now I go back into Acid and see how on or off this is. Let's see. Yeah, it's not bad, but as you can see, when I zoom way in, I'm a little late. So this could cause a problem when I'm playing a live instrument. This varies from sound card to sound card. Some are worse than others. So we're going to go back. Uh, up into the options menu, click on preferences and find the audio device tab. By default, uh, your default audio recording device uh, will be set to automatically detect hardware recording latency. We're going to take that off and we're going to manually enter in our latency. There's not much correlation between the negative numbers and the positive numbers as far as how fast or how slow the latency actually is. I originally thought that the negative numbers meant faster, you know, because that would imply, you know, negative on the left side of the plane, positive on the right side, but that's not the case. I was going to try negative 52 because why not? And now I go back and arm my track for record again. Record and, and try again with the finger snaps. This is all very arbitrary. Oh, and this is even worse. Let's try, let's go to the right now. Why not? Let's go to 120 positive number. See how that works. Okay, now that's too far to the left, but we're making progress. So eventually, I've settled on negative 121. Why negative 121? I don't know. That's just how it is. That's where the guesswork element comes in. Um, so now, if you're one of the many people who are blighted by low latency with your stock sound cards, you too have some guesswork to do. Um, it sucks. It, it takes a couple minutes. That only took me about three, four, five minutes. So it's worth it. Um, but like I said, my advice to you is if you're serious about professional recording, uh, MIDI, and so on, you're probably going to want to buy, you're definitely going to want to buy a professional audio interface. I hope this video helped. Appreciate the positive comments. I've gotten quite a few. And uh, I will continue to make more, maybe more beat making videos, more loop libraries, so on and so forth. And my cat, what are you doing? Right. Guess I'm talking too much.